Okay, so this video is a, about, uh, it's a review about uh, results uh, around three periodics in the elliptic billiard and also some, I'm going to cover some very recent results, joint work with Professor Ronaldo Garcia and Professor Jair Coiler. So consider an elliptic billiard, shown black here, its family of three periodics, these blue triangles, let's go ahead and animate them. You can see that these triangles are all tangent to an elliptic cosic, which happens to be confocal with uh, the elliptic billiard itself. So they share these two black dots, the foci. So this is one known in classic invariance uh, regarding n periodics in general, just looking at three n equals three at three periodics. Another classic invariance is shown up here is the fact that uh, the perimeter of the family is. Uh, invariant. So in this case it's 6.171. If I change the aspect ratio of the elliptic billiard, for example, I go, you know, make it more eccentric. It's now the aspect ratio major by minor is 1.7550. You get a different perimeter, but the cool thing is, is that this perimeter is preserved uh, over the family. Okay, so I want to just review a few results that we had over last year with uh, uh, in our research with three periodics before I went into uh, and periodics, but here we're going to focus on three periodics. The first one is, let's talk about uh, a very interesting triangle center called the Mittingpunkt. Okay, the Mittingpunkt is the point that you obtain when you take the eccentral triangle to the orbits, shown green here. Let's go ahead and make this guy a bit bigger, so we can see the eccentral triangle uh, in its fullness. So the eccentral triangle shown here. It's a family of triangles derived from the orbits. So if I take these eccentral triangles and uh, mark off on the sides of the blue triangle their medial points, their midpoints, okay, and just connect lines from the eccenters passing through the midpoints, these lines concur in a point known as the meeting point. Now what's uh, a realization about elliptic billiards, let me go ahead and make y min be small so we can see the whole thing, is that the family of three periodics maintains x9 stuck in the center. Let's go ahead and chop this guy off as well to 2. So now I can see the whole system a bit better. You can see the meeting point is just uh, stuck in the middle. Now, uh, in stationary as we want to call it. You can also notice that the area of the eccentral triangle denoted by A prime divided by the area of the triangle of the three periodic is invariant. You see it's invariant there at 6.977. If I change the aspect ratio, make this bigger a bit rounder, I can also uh, observe that Though the ratio has changed, it's still invariant. In fact, we show, we noticed later that this invariance is true for any n periodic, provided n is an odd number. So if I if I was uh, observing five periodics here, I would get the same kind of uh, area ratio. Though I would not have something called a missing point. I would have a generalization of the missing point up there. But let's stay restricted to n equals three here. All right. So uh, this was a first uh, observation we made. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the eccentral, the meeting point, and everything else. I want to show you guys a second really neat property of this family. If I draw the in-circle centered on the in-center and the circumcircle centered on the circumcenter, as I animate the family, these uh, uh, points x1 and x3 will be describing elliptic uh, loci. Okay, But the thing that I wanted you guys to think about is that the circumradius, the radius of the purple circle, divided by the in-radius, the radius of the green circle, and denoted by little r and big r, their ratio is also invariant across the family. So this was a second pretty pleasing invariance we observed about this three periodic family. You can see that if I change again the aspect ratio, I get a different ratio and a different uh, uh, perimeter, but both of these quantities are invariant. Now, of course, you can trace all the invariances that we've been studying back to the two basic ones, which are uh, the perimeter constancy and the caustic tangency. Okay, 
there's many uh, fold invariances that derive from these, and their manifestations are often uh, quite surprising. Okay, so here I'm going to be talking about another manifestation. Okay, we've seen area ratios. So, you know, if I allow to draw that, that guy is invariant. We've seen little r by big R being invariant. We've also seen uh, classic invariances as perimeter invariance and um, tangency invariance. Let's talk about two new ones that were just recently discovered. In fact, a couple of days ago. Okay, let me go ahead and clean up the environment here and let's talk about the uh, stationary meeting point and its associated paddle triangle. What's a paddle triangle? Uh, imagine I'm dropping a perpendicular from the stationary meeting point down which one of the sides of the three periodics and the feet of these perpendiculars define and they're not shown, the perpendiculars are not shown, but their feet are shown here and they define the vertices of the so-called paddle triangle with respect to x9. x9 is its paddle point. So I can animate this paddle triangle and I can also look at its area. Turns out the area of this paddle triangle denoted here by a9 multiplied by the area of the eccentral triangle is invariant. This is neat. This is a new result. You can see it up there. Let's go ahead and draw the cousin of this paddle triangle known as the antipodal triangle. Here's the antipodal triangle. So the antipodal triangle with respect to x9, okay, of a blue triangle is this red triangle such that its paddle triangle is the blue one. Okay, so what you're doing is you're saying, what is a triangle such that its paddle triangle with respect to x9 would be the blue triangle, right? So it's the inverse operation. Very good. Uh, so what's going on here? Uh, let's go ahead and think about the area of this antipodal triangle. And I'm going to denote that by a9 prime. It's a value here. It's a variable. But it turns out that its ratio with the area of the eccentral is invariant. So compare the two results, right? This has a ratio that is invariant. The previous one had a product that was invariant, both with the eccentral triangle. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw both. And this is the main uh, conjunction that I wanted to talk about. We get a bunch of corollary uh, invariants. First corollary invariant, and this stems from these two relations on the fact that a prime over a is constant, is that the product of areas of the paddle triangle with the antipodal one is invariant. Furthermore, the ratio of their areas divided by, now the blue square comes into play, the square of the area of the three periodics is invariant. And lastly, the ratio of their areas times the square of the area of the eccentral, and these are all corollaries, is also invariant. So here you see a bunch of invariants. How many do we have? One, the cosec is the second one. Stationary of x9 is the third one. The ratio of in circle to uh, in radius to circumradius is a fourth one. And then we have all these products. So a fifth one, which might be this product, and a sixth one, which might be this ratio, and then seven, eight, nine. So here you have nine invariants. They're not unrelated, they're not orthogonal. They all can be traced back down to the two basic uh, first integrals of the elliptic billiard, conservation of momentum and conservation of um, energy. But you get a bunch of interesting manifestations. All right, thank you very much. And I will leave some references to this work and related uh, publications in the comments.